Okay, so this is a complete walkthrough of how to get your motion capture data from Mocopi on your phone into Unreal Engine into a working mannequin. So I'm gonna assume you've already got the Mocopi system and you're now you're wanting to get that data, the motion capture data into Unreal Engine. So the first step is gonna be is you've gotta get the software, the plugin. So you're gonna type in Mocopi download and it's going to take you to the sony.net mocopi sdk download site and what you're going to want to do is get the mocopi receiver plugin for unreal engine and it does support unreal engine 5.2 so then you're just going to go ahead and download this file and unzip it it comes as a zip file so just go ahead and do that that is step number one Okay, so the next step is we're gonna launch Unreal Engine, the most current version you have, and I have 5.20. I'm gonna go to games, I'm gonna go to third person. I want third person because I want the mannequin that's in there. And I'm just gonna call this Mocopi one, and I'll go create. And it's gonna go ahead and start this project for me, load this project up. And again, this just takes a minute. As soon as it opens, I'm just gonna go ahead and shut it down. Then I'm gonna go into my downloads folder here. Well, first let me go into find that project. So I'll go into my Unreal Projects folder. There's Mocopi one. I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna make a new folder. And I'm gonna call this folder capital P-L-U-G-I-N-S, plugins. And then I'll close that. I'll leave that open, I guess. And then I'm going to go into my downloads folder where I have my downloads. Downloads are here somewhere. Downloads. And here's my Mocopi folder that I downloaded and I extracted it here. I'll pick the folder that applies to the engine I'm using. So it's 5.2. I'm going to left click, then I'm going to right click and just copy it. And then I'm going to go back into my Unreal Projects folder. For me, I have it on my D drive. Go into my Unreal Engine projects right here. Click right here. In my plugin folders, open it up and then paste that Mocopi into there. So I just go paste. And it pastes that in there. And with that done, then I can go back into my Unreal Engine projects folder again right here or you could just go you know through the you know your you know the the main browser i go into my unreal projects folder which is here somewhere where is it there it is right here and then i just click into that folder and then i just restart i restart it and this time it'll it'll recognize the plugin is in there i i believe the plugin will be enabled but we'll double check so it'll give me this message to update i say yes i'm going to dismiss this and now I'm just going to double check and make sure that that Mocopi plugin is in there. So now I'll search for it, Mocopi plugin, and it's already enabled. And so we're good to go. So now we've got the Mocopi Live Link plugin installed. So what this really means is that the motion capture data that we get from Mocopi actually comes in live. We don't bring in the pre recorded files, the BBH files. I haven't been able to get those in successfully. The only way I get the Mocopi data in, motion capture in, is live. So we have to record a live link, make a live link, and that's kind of what this tutorial is about, is recording that data, and then what do we do with that data? <laughs> kind of where we go from there. So anyway, that's what this is. So the next step is going to be to link our Mocopi app to the Unreal Engine program. So this part is kind of cool. It's actually, you can watch it hooking up the sensors. And sometimes I'll get an error where it says it doesn't recognize it and I just have to turn turn the sensor off and turn it back on again. But this, like I said, is pretty straightforward. 
So step three is really to get your Mocopy app and to wire it up. And just so to do that, just go ahead and follow the on-screen instructions. That takes probably like five minutes to get all these sensors hooked up, maybe five or 10 minutes. So go ahead and wire yourself up because this is done live. So you've got to get all the sensors on you and it all calibrated and working. So go ahead and do that and just follow the instructions on the screen for that. And I'll be back as soon as I do it myself. So once you get all the sensors rigged up, you're going to click there to set your IP address. Let's see, we go on motion settings, PC connections. That's where you'll enter your IP config address and you just go to your command line to do that. And then you'll see also you'll see this button here where it says send and receive and you'll notice if you click it the icon down here changes so that's going to record a bbh file and this is going to send the wireless signal to unreal engine the live link signal so once you've got all this set up then you're ready to go to the next phase on unreal in front of the desktop and that's where we'll go next once you're all hooked up and ready to go you know this button will record to a motion capture file, which you don't want. And this will do the live footage. This is the button that you click again. Once you see that, it looks like a Wi-Fi signal. You click that again, and that's what actually starts the transfer right there. And it'll say starting transfer there. So that's the starting transfer button. And then to stop the transfer, you just click it again. So I just wanted to add that little point of clarification. Okay, now once we're back, we just need to go into, we're in Unreal Engine now, and we have, I have all the sensors hooked up, and I have my motions all ready to send, and everything on my phone, and everything's linked up, and I'm sitting in front of the computer right now. And what I'll do is I need to go into Windows, Virtual Production Live Link. And then for the source, the Mocapi Live Link should show up, and you go Create Source and you'll click on it and then if you go on your app and click that the button it should say start transfer and then it show up here with a green button so it only showed up there because I pressed the button on my app and now it's transferring the data so everything looks good and you can see there's offset coming in here and everything right there so now if I just go into the Mocopi plugin here Live link content. You'll see the Mocapi Mocapi actor, and I'll drag it onto the scene. And if I hit play, you'll see me. You'll see, that is sort of supposed to be a representation of me, but I'm actually I'm standing up from the computer right now. I, there might be some interference here because I have a lot of stuff around my desk, so it's kind of wonky right here. And I'm not quite sure why. But I'll stand in a T pose, but I see my one arm isn't showing. Like I'm not getting a clean pose here. So I'm, I'm just turning around. I don't have much room to move. Let me just take my headphones off and move away from the computer here. Okay, so I recalibrated the device and I took my headphones off because I, I might be causing some interference too. So, so now I'm going to press start transfer on the phone, the little green button. And let's see, there I go. And see, I'm sitting at my keyboard right now. And let's see if it's any better. That looks a little bit better. Yeah, so I'm at my keyboard right now. I have my arms extended. Yeah, so I did a recalibration and it's it's still not 100%, but you know, I have to try to maybe recalibrate it and it could be I have too much stuff. But I'll stand up in a minute here. I'm sitting in my chair. It's, there we go. Yeah, so it's a little wonky. But here's what we're going to do. So at this stage I'm all linked up. The animation isn't that great but I see that the link is going through. So what I'm gonna do now is on the plugin, I'm gonna go into the Unreal Mannequin here and I'm gonna drag my mannequin in. And my mannequin should be following along with whatever this other mannequin <laughs> is doing. 
So is this ready for prime time? I don't know. I can put them close together here. So when I move one, the other one moves, see? So now we're kind of getting there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stand up and you won't necessarily hear me. I'm just going to stand away from the computer and do some T poses and things like that. Okay, I'm standing in a T pose. I'm going to spin around. I'm going to put my arms above my head. I'm walking toward the computer. I'm turning away from the computer, walking away. I'm going in another room. Kind of going off this, coming back. T pose again. Spin around again. Put my arms above my head. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to kneel down on the ground. And then get up. And that's it. So everything seems like it's working right now, sort of. Now I'm just standing up by the computer right now. So here's the main part of this tutorial is, so, okay, great, we've got this capture going on. The animation isn't that great, but it's there. So what? how do I record this? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Windows, Cinematics, Sequencer. I'm in Sequencer. I can actually just come over here and go into the main content folder now. And I'm just going to go to Cinematics and go Level Sequence. And we'll just call it that. I'm going to double click on it. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to Track, Add to Sequencer. And I'm going to add the mannequin. It's the mannequin actor I want, not the mocapi actor. So I'll add that to the sequencer. And you'll see that once I do, I lose my animation. So we got to get rid of the control rig. So just select control rig and delete it. And now I've got my animation back. So then all I'm going to do with the target skeletal mesh selected is I'm going to hit record. And it's going to go, are you sure you want to start the recording? And I'm going to say yes. Okay, so I just recalibrated it, and this time I was facing the computer when I did, and I put the phone on my computer desk, so I was facing the computer and the phone at this time, and it looks okay. I'm, I'm looking forward. It looks a lot better now. So let's go ahead and try this again. I have to go ahead and hit Start Transfer on the phone, the little green button. And there, see how much better it looks? Okay, so let's try it this time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and create a new level sequence, go into cinematics and we'll double click into it. We're going to go ahead and add to sequencer the mannequin actor here. And then notice what happens. We got to delete the control rig, delete the control rig. Now I'm going to hit control and zoom out. And then we're going to record a little bit longer animation here about 750 frames and then all I have to do is click on the skeletal mesh and go record do I want to record yes so now I'm just gonna go ahead and do a quick T pose and see if it's any better And it stops automatically. It stopped recording automatically. So we're good there. And then what I'm going to do is just collapse this down a little bit. And with the target mesh selected, I'm going to right click. I'll, I like it collapsed. I'm going to right click and go bake animation sequence. I'll put this on the content level folder. We'll call this animation sequence number two and we'll go okay export animation it happens really quick come back into the content browser if I go to all 
So here at the content level, there's our second one we did. And maybe this will be a little bit better. I'll drag this onto the scene and I hit play. And let's see if this one's any better. It's this one. So this one is better. Yeah, yeah, this one is better. Oh yeah, it's much better. So now you can see the animation isn't perfect, but it's done a lot of the work, grunt work for me. And now I can go into the animation sequence editor with this baked out and try adjusting it and making it a little bit better. So I'll hit escape there. And if I double click into the, the sequence here, you'll see there it is in the sequence editor. And so I can adjust that shoulder. I can maybe smooth up some of those turns, but it's the beginning. It's just the beginning. And this is all new technology. So you're talking about $450 for a very kind of basic motion capture system. But who knows where this could go and how it could be improved. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Take care and I will talk to you later.